Hello. Today I'm going to be covering some of the different castle designers that exist for Stronghold Kingdoms as well as their advantages and disadvantages and help you decide which one is for you. So to start off with we have the Stronghold Kingdoms Advanced Guide Castle Builder. Now this is basically a builder that is that uses divs to allow you to drag structures around and place them. It runs in a web page so as long as you have an HTML5 compatible browser you should have no problem using this this castle builder. However there are a limited number of divs you can actually drag onto the map. I'm not sure I, I will exhaust it here but it has happened for me where the stone that I dragged onto the map it wasn't enough because you're limited as to how many of these divs are available on the page but it is a good handy little browser for those who just want to sort of brainstorm a design in their head uh, before placing it in their actual village as opposed to the more sophisticated castle builder which happens to be this one by David Green now some things have happened since he originally posted this post in the forums, namely the fact that code.google.com no longer exists and the repository has been moved to GitHub. So you're not going to be able to find a jar file at this link that he provided here because GitHub provides source files and either he didn't bother providing the jar file or you just can't provide one. So I what I did was I took the latest version of the castle designer uh, 1.10 zipped it and edited this post and attached it as a file that you could download it's only 112 kilobytes so it's not going to break the bank or anything but once you download that file simply extract it into a folder now right what I, what I have here are several different versions of it but basically right here is the 1.10 version of the castle designer and here's the extracted version of it. Now to open this file you're going to need the Java runtime environment and downloading JRE comes with a few, few security vulnerabilities let's say but to, to get it you have to go to java.com uh, forward slash en forward slash download forward slash windows underscore xpi dot jsp. Now all these links to these pages that I just showed you will be provided in the description below this video so don't don't sweat the link bit so just click agree and start download now this is java.com so you know it's not a fake website but uh, agree and start download it will download an installer a, a stub and then click run that which will proceed to download the full version of the Java runtime environment. It's roughly 40 megabytes, I think, 40 or 50. Once that is installed, uh, you can now find, you can now open the jar files. In this case, where we want to open the jar file for Castle Stranglehold Kingdoms Castle Designer version 1.10. Click Open with, and then you have to click More Apps. You will not see Java runtime environment. I hear this, the SE binary. So you're going to have to browse for it. So you click look on other apps for this PC. Go to program files x86. Find, geez, wait, wait, find Java. And then click the folder inside there. Click bin. And click java.exe now if you do not see a .exe it means that you have hidden your file extensions now this is the default setting in most operating windows operating systems so it's most likely that you never bothered to enable um, file extensions so if you don't see it uh, look for a tutorial on how to enable them I'm not going because it varies from version of windows to version of windows Google for it or something until you see java.exe. Even without the extension, uh, I believe it'd be the only file here just called Java. Select that and click open. Now it should be associated with this file. As you can see, nothing happened the first time, but now when we double click it, it should start up a program that looks like this. 
Now this program runs in its own window and it can be quite resource intensive at times. I used to run it on my laptop and I remember I was sort of limited uh, to what other things I could run with it because it used up a lot of CPU cycles just idling here at the desktop. So it's probably not ideal to leave it running all the time if you're not going to need to use it. Now the great thing about this uh, program is the fact that there's collision detection, meaning you can't put buildings in the wrong place. If you try to put two great towers right next to each other, uh-uh, not happening. If you try to accidentally put them cor kitty corner, it's not happening either. Uh, it also features a, a nifty little time slider, so uh, you put down the buildings you need built, and then depending upon your research you just slide the slider you have 10 points invested in construction research it'll tell you your how long it'll take to build those it'll also tell you how many resources it'll cost to build your current design in both stone iron wood and gold a recent addition added the killing pits which is quite useful because it will allow you to more accurately see a representation of the iron you're going to need to build your castle now another nifty feature about this program is the fact that it will let you know if you're trying to build too many guard houses, too many ballistas, too many turrets for your design. Although later ages increase the number, of, the potential number of turrets and ballistas available depending upon the parish guild, this is a great designer or aid for World One, in which all tunnelers guild. Not, all turret guilds and all ballista guilds are capped at 10 apiece. Now it should be noted that I did sort of have a hand in helping to bring this program to life. I designed all the sprites here for it. So I'm not sure that constitutes a conflict of interest making a video about it or anything. I just thought you needed to be aware that I did play a small role in developing this one. So if you think that that's the reason I favor it over the HTML5, that's your prerogative. One last really nifty feature about this castle designer is that you can save your design for later. If, you, if, you're, if you're happy with what you currently have, click save and you'll be given a dialog that comes up. Basically just type in a name for your file and I'll save it as a portable networks graphic file, a PNG file. So later when you want to reload your file, simply click open, navigate to wherever you have saved your file. In my case, I saved it on the desktop. Click open, and voila, your castle is back and capable of being edited. So if you need to make some updates to your design or whatever before you share it with your faction mates, it's all good stuff here. Um, like I said, the buildings are fully editable after you reload it. You're not just loading an image to see it or anything like that. So this is my personally my favorite castle designer and although you have to jump through a few additional hoops to get it running right away, once you do, I think the investment in time is well worth the time you'll save having the convenient collision detection features and the ability to save and open previous castle designs, which makes also makes it easier to share them with other people. But make sure when you share them, with people that uh, the image sharing site that you're using allows you to upload in the PNG file format because if you upload it as a JPG or a JPEG file the, the program will not be able to detect the barcode that this image uses anymore due to the fact that JPGs or JPEGs are lossy picture formats which use a considerable amount of compression thereby removing some uh, important pixel information the resulting uh, file from the castle designer, the PNG image that you save, it can also be open in a regular photo viewer. So as you can see right here, I have Windows Photo Viewer open, and it the castle loads up just fine. Of course, you can't edit it because this is a photo viewer, but you can see what it looks like, basically. And right there is the barcode I was talking about right there at the top. The one problem with installing Java on your system is that it will also try to install a couple of plugins for Firefox. Now this isn't a problem with Google, uh, Google Chrome as it has blocked the extensions entirely. I'm not sure about Internet Explorer because I don't use it, but uh, for Firefox you have to be aware of the fact that after installing a Java runtime environment you will get a couple of plugins uh, installed for Firefox. Simply uh, go to the plugins 
or the add-ons and then click the plugins tab and uh, once you're on this page choose to never activate either of these plugins and they shouldn't ever pose a, a security threat to you there is no way to currently uninstall the IC unless you uninstall the Java runtime environment so if you've installed JRE you're sort of stuck with these plugins in Firefox and it is a downside I really don't like using Java many other people don't either due to this potential security vulnerabilities in the browser but some programs still use it and it's a sad reality but it allows you to use those programs on other systems or operating systems that also support Java so in our case that would mean you could also use it on Mac if you if you're running stronghold kingdoms on a Mac and you want you don't have to have to bother to switch over when you are designing a castle this is a great it's a great program the ideal solution would be something that runs in HTML5 but I digress that's getting a bit technical I understand so I'm just going to close this video off there uh, thank you very much for watching and until next time farewell